Hi folks, in this video, I'm going to show you how to save a search on LinkedIn Sales Navigator and how to use safe searches to put your LinkedIn lead generation on autopilot. So let's dive right in. And make sure to watch this video till the end because I will also share with you my secret techniques to get the most out of safe searches and how to use them to guarantee a super high reply rate to your prospecting campaigns. So here I made a search of uh, founders of companies uh, in France and simply the only thing you get to do to save this search is to click here on save search to get notified of new results. This search will be automatically saved. To access it, you can click on save searches here and here uh, LinkedIn will put like a default title. To modify it, you can go here, control A and say like founder friends, for example. And here you go. After that, after a few days, after a week, the new results will appear here and you just need to click here on new results. You will see on your search engine only the new leads that fit your search criteria. You can see here on the top right 1.5k new results and if you want to access to the original search with all the results, you can click here. After that, if you want to go back to the new results, you can click on here show 2k new results and you will go back to the new results of the search searches. So that was the technical process to follow to uh, save a search on Sales Navigator. Now let's see how you can use save searches to really put your LinkedIn lead generation on autopilot. This is pretty simple as well because once you save a search, LinkedIn will notify you in green here every time there are new people that fit your search criteria. So what I would advise you to do is to uh, define a day in your week. It can be a Monday, for example. And every Monday, you're gonna go to Sales Navigator. You're gonna click here on your new results and you're gonna add this new result to your prospecting campaign or you're gonna start sending messages to these new leads or maybe you're gonna add this list to a list of leads you have. What uh, most of you uh, will want to do is to uh, export these leads uh, from LinkedIn Sales Navigator into a CSV file and get their emails. So for that, you can use the uh, Evaboot Chrome extension. To download it, you can click on the first link in the description of this video. And once you download the Chrome extension, you will see here a new button, export with Evaboot. And so you can click on that button. You will have to wait a few seconds for the search uh, to be exported. And then you're gonna have to choose between exporting uh, the leads uh, without the emails. So in case you just want the LinkedIn data or the leads with the professional email. So in that case, we want the lead with emails. So I'm gonna click here on launch new export, save search new results and click on launch. And once the export is ready, I will receive an email notification with a link to download the file. So we can see here that the search has been launched and usually for a small search like this of 30 leads, it will only take a few minutes. Okay, so right now I have my uh, search result ready to be downloaded. I have few columns here. So uh, size, it's uh, basically the number of leads I have in search and I add this column filtered. And what you need to know is that most of the time, the leads that are in your sales navigator searches won't fit your search results. So there are a lot of problems with the LinkedIn search engine. And for example, sometimes you are looking for a head of sales and they will give you head of talent and you don't know why. So I won't detail all that uh, in this video. If you want to know why uh, LinkedIn search engine make these mistakes and how to avoid them on LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you can watch the tutorial that will appear right now on the top right uh, of this video. And then we can also see that if you boot find 18 emails, and you can see that we had 14 safe emails, we have risky emails as well. Risky emails are basically uh, catch-all emails. So basically we are not able to uh, say if they really exist or not. Uh, if you want to have more details about that, I will leave a link in the description to explain what is the difference between a safe email and a risky email. Basically, with a LinkedIn email finder, you can expect between 40% and 80% uh, discovery rate. It usually depends on your target. For example, if your target is super digital, working in startup, you will find more emails. And if your target is more in a classic industry like construction, for example, it will be harder for us and for other LinkedIn email finders to find the emails because they publish less uh, information online, basically. So if you want to download your search results, you can click on file here. And here you will get a preview of the Evaboot file. 
So you get the colon match filters. So here we say if your lead match your filters or not. If your lead doesn't match the filters, we say why. This is a wrong title, wrong description, wrong company, stuff like that. Then you get first name and last name cleaned. Uh, this is important to, to detail that because most of the time the data on LinkedIn is not clean. For example, in the names, you get capital letters, you get emojis, etc. And it takes time to clean all these data. Here, Evaboot uh, is doing it for you. You get the email, the status of the email. Is it a valid email, a risky email? Then you get the position, company names, uh, cleans as well. Uh, the website, the domain, location, LinkedIn URL, industry, company specialties, they are like keywords which details the, um, the activity of the company, the uh, employee company range, the employee company count. So this is the precise number of people that have declared working in these companies. And this is the, the range that is uh, put by the admin on the company page. Company location, prospect connection, years and months in position, company LinkedIn URL, year funded, company description, profile picture, basically a ton of data you can use for your LinkedIn outreach. You can launch an extraction and then see for yourself what data you get out uh, of this export. So now I know that this news will maybe disappoint some of you, but uh, if it doesn't offer a free trial. Uh, so we give you the preview of the file. We give you the preview of the emails we found. And then if you're like interested by the data and you think it's worth it, you can click here to buy the credits. And once you get those credits, you can spend these credits to download the file. So once you bought the credits and you unlocked uh, the export, you'll be able to download it here and you can like only the, download the filtered leads, meaning the leads really matching your shared filters. And you can select also to only download the lead with emails or only the leads with uh, valid emails, safe emails. So for this uh, tutorial, we're going to export all the leads here They are going to appear in my downloads here. And then I will import into Google Sheets so you can have a closer look at the data. So when you import the data on Google Sheet, it will basically look like this. So here I will simply delete the columns with a lot of text. So we got the cleaner view of the file here, for example, we got um, the reason of the reject for uh, these leads. So here I got matching filters, no. And then I got the reason why they have been rejected by the Evaboot uh, filter in algorithm. And here it was because of a wrong company type. Most of the time you will have like wrong title or wrong company. So you can see here all the names are cleaned, no emojis, no capital letters. Sometimes you get uh, people that only put the first letter of their family names. If a boot can't find that, so if you want them, it will be like your job to uh, go back here and add the complete family name. But most of the time you will only add the names into your outreach. And what I wanted to show you are these columns here really uh, useful if you do prospecting. Everboot will tell you if a prospect is an open profile or if it's open to work. When a prospect is open profile, it means that you can send emails for free. So you don't need to spend an email credit to contact these people. If you don't know what emails are or what open profiles are, I added a link to a tutorial that will appear on the top right um, of this video. But basically, when you have this column here, you can add the filter. So Click here on this icon and then go back to the column, click on open profile, filter on true. And basically here you see all the uh, open profiles. So that can make your prospecting more efficient. And knowing that now connection requests are limited by LinkedIn between 100 and 200 per week, identifying the open profiles like this can help you save uh, connection request credits for other leads. So you see here, if you do that, operation every week you go to sales navigator you export with either boot you add the professional emails then you can use week after weeks these files to manually prospect these people or to upload these files into your favorite linkedin outreach tool okay so now you know how to save search you know how to put your linkedin lead generation on autopilot now i will show you how to get the most out of sales searches with what i call the icebreaker filters. So basically the icebreaker filters will be the best filters to use with self searches to uh, send the best uh, LinkedIn prospecting messages. For example, you could make a search for you know, founders 
in the US, let's say with uh, startups, so small companies, and you want to have, I don't know, a shared experience uh, with these people. So the best filters to use with search searches are these ones here, the recent updates. These filters will basically provide you icebreakers ideas. So for example, if I select change ups here, I will see here recently hired and I know that this person has been recently hired by this company and this is an information I can use in my prospecting messages. I can say, hi team, I've seen you've recently been hired by this company and this can help me you know, create a connection, start a relationship uh, with this person. Same thing for uh, posted on LinkedIn or mentioned in your news. You can use this information to craft a relevant icebreaker for your messages. So here, let's say I have two recent posts on LinkedIn. I can check this post and mention this post in my LinkedIn outreach. Same thing for mentioning the news. I can use that information to craft my message and say, oh, uh, congratulations for your recent fundraising. Congratulations for your new launch, etc." So this makes really good uh, icebreaker ideas. So you got recent updates and you can also hide uh, buyer intent. For example, uh, you can uh, reach out to someone saying that you noticed that they recently followed your company and ask if they want more information. You can uh, reach out to people saying that you view that they recently uh, view uh, your profile and maybe ask them if they want more information as well. So if you use these filters combined with search searches, let's say for example mentioned in the news and then you save the search, when you go back next week on your save search results, you will see all the people that have been mentioned in the news or posted on LinkedIn or change jobs or followed your company or view your profile recently within the last week. And that makes a huge difference because here you got timing with you. And basically, if you follow the same process I showed you before, you export these leads with a boot and you contact them right away, you can say, oh, I seen that you've recently been mentioned in the news. It's a really fresh news. For, for your leads because it just happened a few days ago. So it will obviously ring a bell in your prospect head and they will remember the information and will think that, oh, you made research on them. So the perceived value of the effort that you made to research this prospect is high, but the actual effort you made to get this information is pretty low. So what you can do is create different self searches. For example, one mentioned in the news, one posted on LinkedIn, one change jobs, one follow your company, and one uh, view your profile. You got your prospecting sequences already ready with a specific copywriting, and then you just need to add these leads. So export these leads and add these leads into your campaign and fill your prospecting, prospecting campaign like this. And then, so you have the source of your leads that is automated and you put these leads into prospecting sequences that have an already ready copywriting, especially made for uh, these filters. So you can do that for leads and you can also do that uh, for companies. So let's say you are a recruiting agency and you want to reach out to companies that just started hiring. We are going to select some sizes. Let's put a random keyword like software like in the United States. And let's select uh, job opportunities here. So these are all the software companies currently hiring on LinkedIn at this size and based in the United States. So this is an interesting information, but maybe in that list, there are companies that posted their jobs uh, like three months ago, and we don't know that. But if we save the search, and then we go back next week and we see the new results here, it means that the job posts just have been published by these companies within the last week. So it's super fresh. Imagine you are a company, you are posting a job on LinkedIn, and three days after that, you get a prospecting message saying, oh, I see that you recently started to recruit on LinkedIn. Do you need the help of an agency? So here, boom, again, you got timing with you. You came just at the right time uh, when the problem happened uh, for the company. So that can be a great way to uh, generate leads as well. With this technique, you're gonna need an extra step that will be adding uh, the, uh, the accounts into a list and then find decision makers into these companies. So let's say, let's pretend here I'm on the new results. Well, I can take actual new results like this. Let's pretend it was a search uh, before. Maybe I did it. So you take your, your new results, hiring. You put it in the list, like companies hiring week two, for example. Then you're gonna head to the lead search, go on account list here, company hiring two. So here on your right will appear all the people that are working uh, in these companies. 
Obviously, you want to target people that are in charge of recruiting. So you can write like HR and maybe uh, talent acquisition. Basically, every job titles that are likely to uh, manage the, the recruiting on the company. And then boom, you have all the right people to contact and send your messages to. Same thing here. You can export them with Eviboot, get the professional emails and add them into your prospecting sequences. So this is like the best use case for, for accounts. What you can also do is use these filters here, funding events. And here you can build prospecting sequences saying that, oh, congrats for the fundraising. Does that mean that now you have new scaling challenges and maybe recruiting as well? Senior leadership changes here. So for example, you can check that if someone, uh, if a company has recruited a new head of sales, a new CFO, maybe that person will be likely to hire new agencies or buy new tools. So maybe that's the right timing for you to reach out. But that's how you use LinkedIn Sales Navigator Surf Churches to put your LinkedIn lead generation on autopilot. If you enjoyed this video, you can smash the like button below and subscribe to your channel. And if you want to know more about how to use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to generate leads, you can click on the tutorial that will appear just right here. I wish you a great day, guys, and I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.